Hi everyone, I'm Morgan King and I'm a rising senior at Hershey High School. I first wanted to start off by thanking everyone for coming out tonight and I also wanted to thank Ted Youth X Chocolate Ave for having me speak. It truly is an honor. I know you all have probably heard this more times than you can count, but COVID has truly been a crazy time. So many people have had to transition, whether that be working online or doing online school, we've all had to make huge sacrifices. And with those sacrifices has brought on a lot of free time. Today, I wanna to talk about how I used that free time and ended up reading to over 170 different Children's Miracle Network hospitals. It all started right after the shutdown in March. I was at home laying around in my pajamas and it was right after school ended. And I was like, let's watch some YouTube, even though I had stayed up the night before till 2 a.m. watching cooking videos. Um, I found this ASMR video of someone reading my favorite childhood book, The Little Engine That Could. When I listened to her, I was hit with such a wave of nostalgia. After classes, I decided to go and look around my house for all of my old books. And when I was reading them, it just hit me and I, it hit me so hard I had to sit down. I remembered my mom giving me warm milk and reading me to sleep. And suddenly I had an idea of how to use this free time. Why not read to the kids in hospitals? After school that day, I got on my phone, I called the right people at the hospital and I told them my idea, eyes wide open. And looking back, I got the response I should have expected. I'm sorry, unfortunately, no visitors are allowed. I was heartbroken, not only for myself, but more so for those kids who were stuck with no family to visit them and no enjoyment. It hurt that I wasn't able to help them. But as I was sitting there wallowing in my own despair, my dad came in and said, quite possibly the most dad thing ever, you're always on your phone, why not just do it that way? Correction, he then said the most dad thing ever, dinner's in 30 minutes and do your homework. When I was annoyed that he always was reminding me. He brought up a fairly good idea. Why not do it that way? I first thought that I could just FaceTime the kids, but I quickly dismissed that when I realized it was only one-on-one -on -one and there was no way for them to be able to rewatch the video if they were feeling lonely. Then I had a better idea. Why not start a YouTube channel? It had everything I needed, easy access, remote possibility that somebody wants to watch a video at 3 a.m., go ahead, and they could rewatch it as much as possible because it's public domain. Then came the harder issue of finding somebody to sponsor me. I asked my dad if he had any contacts, and he gave me one of his associates who works at Penn State. I talked to her, pitched her my idea, and she loved it. We went over some more details, how the channel would work, privacy, rights to the books, everything like that, and she was enthralled. She told me, go ahead, start the channel, do everything you need to do. I was amazed. And then she said one more thing. You only have one week to do it. Great. I threw myself head in first and I had the eye bags to prove it. I went trying to record every book in my house and the harder topic, getting the rights to publishing those books online. But I was able to do it with a lot of hard work and a lot of begging. <laughs> then it became the harder issue of finding more readers. I realized me reading myself, while impactful, it wasn't as much as I wanted. I asked a few close friends, and then I asked probably my biggest helper in all of this, my brother. He sent oh. out his version of the bad signal, and now I had this whole new wet network to talk to. It was amazing. I expected maybe five videos by the first week, and I had over 20. I got back to the person at the hospital, and she was amazed. We were both so excited. She told me she was immediately gonna go to his higher ups. And then I had to do probably the hardest thing in this whole process. I had to sit and wait for what felt like an eternity, but in reality was maybe a week max, who knows. But finally she gave me the go ahead. And ever since then, I've just been posting and posting and posting. Over now we have over 50 videos from people of all different ages, genders, ethnicities, we even have people reading in different languages. And while this process has been extremely rewarding, for me, it's not the amount of likes or follows or knowing that I personally was successful in my idea. It's every time I get a comment or an email telling me that I helped them in any way possible, whether it was putting a smile on their kid or their own face, or just helping them forget their pain for two or three minutes. That's what really matters to me. Let's be honest for ourselves with just 
two seconds. COVID has stunk. I mean, I don't get to go out with my friends, my favorite restaurants. I'm not able to go and eat, but it helped me do something I've been wanting to do for a long time. It helped me get involved and be a part of my community. And that's what we all have right now. We have this huge amount of free time and we always have the chance, whether as an inv individual or a part of a community to make a change. Before I leave, I would like to leave you with a little quote that helped me through all of this. In life, when we reach our peaks, our mountains, our highs, we might feel great, but know that nothing can grow there. It's in the valleys, the lows of life, that we have the chance to do and make the greatest change. Going into this now, this school year or this work year, do something. You be that change. Do good. Thank you guys for your time. And please go subscribe to our YouTube channel at Children's Quarantine. And if you personally would like to submit a video, email me at readingforquarantine at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much.